Number one, fish are hung on a spring scale to determine their mass. Most fishermen feel no obligation to truthfully report the mass. Hmm, a little harsh for a textbook publisher, don't you think? I wonder where they got the data to support that claim. Anyway, letter A, what is the force constant of the spring in such a scale if the spring stretches eight centimeters for a 10 kilogram load? So basically, here's the spring without a mass on it, and here's the poor little fish. All right. And uh, what we need to do is we need to find basically the spring constant of this particular spring. Now, notice that when the fish is placed on the spring, the spring will stretch and eventually it reaches an equilibrium. All right. Uh, and a constant equilibrium, a static equilibrium, in other words, uh, meaning that there is no net movement. Right. So if I had to, let's say, draw a free body diagram that detailed, let's say, this particular point. All right. I put a little dot here. Right, that detailed the forces at that particular point, we would notice that there would be a weight component right, pointing down. This would be like the weight of the fish. right? And then there would be an upward force, and that's basically the force that the spring will be applying to the fish. Okay, It's going to be equal but opposite, right? Since it's no movement, right? some of the forces are zero, blah, 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 blah. So this is basically the force of the spring. Okay, So in other words, the force of the spring here the force of the spring then will equal the weight of the fish. Okay, why? Because again, the sum of the forces here in the y direction will equal zero. Why is that the case? Well, because you know that this is really equal to ma. There's no acceleration, so that whole thing goes to zero. All right. In any case, let's now calculate. Let's see uh, what that tells us now, or what we're able to do. So we know we have to figure out the spring constant. So I'm looking at one of these two formulas up here at the top. F is equal to negative kx, or potential energy is one half kx squared. I'm going to use the first equation. All right, F is equal to negative kx. Uh, why? Well, because I know the uh, I know the variables, right? I'm going to plug in the letter a. So the force of the spring, or the force that the spring produces on an object, will be equal to negative the spring negative of the spring constant of that particular spring multiplied then by the uh, stretch, so to speak, of the spring. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a little delta x here instead. All right, basically the change in length. That's really what it should be. So expanding on that, the force that the spring produces on an object is equal to negative spring constant multiplied then by the final, the final x position minus the initial initial x position. Okay. So now that being the case, all I now need to do is going to be to plug in the values. Right. So if we think about this being the initial case here, I'll write a little i here. And then this being the final case, we notice that the initial height will call, you know, zero. It doesn't really matter. And then the final height, since the final point here is lower than the initial point, uh, it would be a negative eight centimeter. OK, just considering the signs. So now the force that the spring uh, produces, right, is as we that was the whole point of this part, right? Force of the spring is equal to the weight of the fish. So I can simply now substitute the weight of the fish on in. That will then equal negative k multiplied then by, well, actually, you know what? I realize I'm going to start plugging in numbers and everything. So let me just first, let me just write this. The weight of the fish all right, will equal then negative k times then the final displacement minus the initial. I'm going to solve this equation right now for k. So when I do that, right, the spring constant will then be equal to uh, negative the weight of the fish divided by then the uh, final displacement minus the initial. And now what I'm going to do is start plugging in the values. So notice here, the signs will work out nicely. So the weight of the fish, okay, is, uh, and don't plug in another negative here because we already took the negative into account when we said that the, the uh, force that the spring produces is equal to the weight of the fish, right? Because basically the force of the spring minus then the weight of the fish was equal to zero, right? The sum of those forces. And then we move that on over. So I already took the negative sign into account. So it's going to be the weight of the fish, which is 10 kilograms multiplied by 9.8, all then divided by the final displacement, which is negative eight centimeters. But you know, we need that in meters. So that's going to be 0 0.08. All right. And then minus zero. So this whole equation then works out to simply be now, let's just do this. And so it's 10 multiplied by 9.8, then divided by 0 0.08. And it's going to be a positive value, which should make sense. We should have a positive x here. So this is going to be 1.23 or so times 10 raised to the third. 
and that is in terms of the spring constant or newtons per meter. All right, so that's the spring constant. All right, so that takes care of letter A. Letter B, uh, what is the mass of a fish that stretches the spring 5.5 now centimeters? So basically it's like a new problem, right? Where you know that if, if there's no, right, go back to this picture over here. If there is no um, a fish on the spring, it is at this relative height. And then if there is a fish on the um, spring, there, the fish is at this relative height. And the fish had a mass of 10 kilograms. So if the fish now has a mass of 5.5, it should be somewhere relatively in the middle, right? So we can simply now calculate that. So for letter B, I'm going to use the same formula, all right, that the, and we're trying to see stretch, stretches the spring, okay? So basically we're saying the same thing, that the weight of the fish here is going to be equal to negative K change in X. So now it wants to know the mass, right? Well, where is the mass in this formula now? Well, it's hidden in the weight, right, of the fish. So it's going to be the mass times gravity is equal to negative K times the change in displacement. I want to solve this thing for mass, so simply divide out the G. So it's negative K times the change in X, all divided by G. And now all we now need to do is plug in the values here. So K, it's a spring constant, right? It's the same thing we just calculated in part A. So that's going to be negative 1.23. I realize I'm going to run out of space, so just give me two seconds. I'm just going to shift this on over. This is going to be negative 1.23 times 10 to the uh, third times then the change in displacement, final minus initial. So again, if I take the initial point to be the starting, the final then it would have dropped down. So the final value would be negative, and that's going to be negative 5, whoops, 0 0.055 minus 0. So that's just negative 0 0.055, and then divide that now by 9.8. And notice here the mass is going to work out to now be a positive value since there's a double negative there. So we're going to take that value, multiply it by 0 0.055, and then divide it by 9.8. So here we get about 6.875. Uh, All right, 6. Point, and we'll do 6.86. Uh, 6. Oh, excuse me, 6.88, I mean, considering rounding, and that'll be in kilograms. All right, so that takes care of letter B. And then uh, letter C. So now it says, you know, how far apart are the half kilogram marks on the scale? So basically now we're trying to how far we're trying to find the change in displacement, right? So again, I'm going to use the same formula I derived in part A, basically. I'm going to put a letter C at the top left here. We're going to have the weight of the fish is going to be equal to negative Kx, or K times delta X, I should say. We're solving for delta X this time, so simply divide out K from both sides. So it's going to be the weight, oops the weight of the fish, divided then by uh, uh, k, right? This whole fraction is now negative, meaning negative w uh, sub f, weight of the fish, divided by k. And now all we now need to do is basically just plug in the values, right? So the change in displacement, we're trying to find the change in displacement for every half kilogram mark. So basically, what's the weight of the fish? Well, it's a half kilogram, multiplied them by 9.8 because we need that in terms of its weight and then divide it by the spring constant which is 1.23 times 10 to the third and lo and behold we're going to find the half mark you know the markings for a half a kilogram on this particular scale so there's going to be uh, negative 0.5 times 9.8 divided by 1225 I'm using the exact value so basically here this is going to work out to negative 0 0.004, uh, and I guess I should go two more sig figs on out, and this is in terms of meters. If you had to then convert this into, you know, centimeters or millimeters, I don't, you know, it doesn't tell us what unit, but, you know, we can convert this then into uh, millimeters, so this would be about negative 4 millimeters or 0.4 centimeters, okay? Any answer's fine. They're all mean the same thing. Uh, notice the answer is negative because the it would have it, the displacement would have been uh, downward. Okay, uh, based upon how I chose to frame the problem. Guys, thank you for tuning in. I hope this helped. Please remember to help us out. All right, subscribe if you can. Hit the like button. Tell your friends. We appreciate your viewership very much. Take care.